If you're not familiar with an interactive whiteboard, it is a presentation system that is connected to the computer and it consists of a whiteboard, which is the big board, a computer, many schools have uh, a hookup for a laptop. I'm using a desktop, so there's no requirement either way as long as it's a working computer with a video output, um, and a projector, and then some special tools that get installed. Uh, depending on what system you're using, there will be tools that will go along with that that, that are installed. Um, the software that comes with your whiteboard will be specific to the brand of whiteboard. So we are using a smart board, and so we have Smart Notebook. That's the name of the software that, that works with it. Um, whiteboards also work with standard off-the-shelf software, and they work with um, websites. So really, anything that you can run on your computer, this, just think of it as a giant computer screen. Um, the difference being that you can actually interact with it. You have ways of interacting with it. Um, so what we're going to do today is look at how some of those programs work. And I'm going to be switching between the PowerPoint presentation and showing some examples. Um, I also say this every time I do a presentation on technology. Um, if it can fail, it will today during this one hour. So just be prepared. There, there may or may not be a moment when we need to reboot. We'll just go with the flow and everything will be fine. Um, so the first piece of software we're going to look at is the notebook software. Notebook software is the software that comes specifically with the smart board. Um, and it's basically an authoring tool. So basically a blank piece of paper as a screen that we can do whatever we need to do with. Um, so I'm going to use my mouse for a minute just to set it up. Um, a few things about the smart board. This particular one comes with a set of markers. And these markers really don't have any marking to them. They're just styluses that are color coded. But as soon as I pick up one of my markers, I can then write on the board. So if I pick up a blue marker, I can write in blue. If I pick up a green marker, I can write in green. If I can't hold a pencil, and this is one reason why we chose the smart board over some others, if I can't hold a pencil, but I can hold, I can write with my finger. Or if I can't, if I can't use my finger, but maybe I can hold something like this toy, um, as long as it's something, I can write with it. Um, it also doesn't have to be that if I pick up the green marker, if my students come in and move the markers all around, so I have green, red, blue, and black, it's really not the color that I've picked up, it's the location. So this marker happens to be in the blue location, so I'm going to be writing in blue no matter what. Um, Another really nice feature for many of our students is handwriting recognition. So if I write on the smart board in my best handwriting, I can then see if it will get recognized, if it will be recognized. And then I have some nice, really clear handwriting. Look at Rob. He's just like <laughs> one for every classroom. And then I can work with that text, and I can move it around. Um, so there's a lot of really nice features that work well for many of our students. The other thing about this particular installation is we have lots of different kids who come for class in this room. So we have preschoolers, we have high schoolers, we have middle schoolers. So one, one of the things that we did was we asked for the installation that's mounted that's adjustable. So depending on who the kids are, it's always going to be at a good level for them, whether we have kids in wheelchairs or kids who are standing or, you know, big or tall, whatever. So those are some of the really nice options. Fade to black. So what we're going to look at is um, just a few of the activities that some of our kids do or have done. Um, so again, looking at the notebook software, um, 
one of the activities for one of our uh, younger groups was for the children to introduce themselves. And so they were introducing themselves to the little group by answering questions. And these are maybe non-readers, kids that are between reading and using symbols. So basically we would start out with their name, they had to find their name, and then they would be asked a question, what's your favorite class? And they could answer the question by taking their name and putting it next to the symbol of the class that they enjoy the most. Um, what's your favorite color? Uh, just as some examples, what's your favorite month? And for the students to be able to find their name and then bring it to their answer where maybe they haven't yet developed handwriting skills or maybe they're not signing yet. Maybe they're using symbols. So this is a nice way that we can design activities that work well for them. Um, I'm going to go between using a mouse and using the smart board. So that was one group that introduced themselves. Then, of course, we had another group who were a little bit older. Let's open this one. All right, well, we'll just have to close it. Sorry about that. It's the technology taking its time. All right. Um, so the other, the other activity that we're going to open is kids who are a little bit older who are introducing themselves in a different way. So for this group, they do have some handwriting skills. And um, they, again, were answering questions about what are your, you know, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite activity? What's your favorite month? What's your favorite vacation? Um, but they really got into the handwriting recognition um, feature of the whiteboard. And so one of the results of that was sort of a little competition amongst each other for who could really try and write more clearly. Um, and as you can see, every time that they answered a question, their handwriting just got a little bit more clear. Um, so that was a really nice thing to see out of the activity. It wasn't the intention of the activity, but that was one of the results. Um, just a few more examples. So this is notebook software. And we can use it for activities that the teacher designs. But we can also use it for activities that are more like worksheets. Um, on any level or any kind of uh, subject area. So we had a group of students who was learning about con conjunctions. So here's the lesson that we were doing. And we had a number of different kinds of activities using the tools of the smart board. Uh, so one of, the, one of the tools that comes with it is sort of a random generator, whether it's random picture, random word, random sentences. So everybody could take a turn um, clicking on the button to randomly select. And then whatever word came up, the student, whoever's turn it was, then had to use it in a sentence or make a sentence with it or explain how it was used. Um, so there's lots of interactive tools that come with it that we can use. So those are just a few examples of the smart board notebook software that comes with it. It's an um, authoring program, but also on the internet, that lots and lots of schools are using smart boards. And people have um, posted activities that they've created. So teachers are downloading those activities and maybe just you know, tailoring them a little bit more to their own students. Fade to black. We've looked at notebook software, and now the next thing we're going to look at is some activities that are online. There are lots of online websites that are free, that have wonderful activities that work well with either just a standard computer or with a whiteboard. Um, so we're going to look at some activities for cause and effect, targeting, early literacy, and um, early numeracy. Uh, the first website is called Help Kids Learn. And this, the, um, 
PowerPoint will be posted on the Discover website. So don't worry about writing it down because this is why I wrote it out this way so that when you get this PowerPoint, you'll have the exact web address. You won't have to you know, make sure that, that you wrote it down correctly. So it's called Help Kids Learn and it's from a company called Inclusive TLC and they make a ton of software that works so well with kids who have a visual impairment. Um, they really understand what we need for software and they design it very well for our kids. So what they've done is they've created a website that has snippets of some of their programs and it's a clever strategy because it's great advertisement for their software but it's also you get to try it out before you buy it and there's enough of the activity there that you really can use it without ever actually getting the software. Um, so they're, they're pretty much abbreviated activities of some of their programs. So let's just look at this, look at the website. Um, so Help Kids Learn has uh, a parents tab, a find out tab, creative tab, stories, and games. And we'll just look through. They have quite a few different kinds of activities. So well, let's just look at stories. And we can scroll down and see that all of these are um, pieces or snippets of programs that they sell commercially. So for example, let's play this game called Flippers and Fins, which comes from um, a series called, um, what's it called? Switch It, uh, not Switch It Transport, Switch It Animals, I think is what it comes from. So I have to close my ink layer. Um, and it's basically a wordless story which works quite well for many of our kids, works with a switch. So something, some kind of animation will, will happen on the screen. And then when the student hits the switch, um, they can go to the next part of the story. That's great for using it on the computer. But if, in fact, we wanted to use it on the whiteboard, one of the things that we could do then is interact with the web page maybe have the students label things. Look at Rob's face. Um, so here's the fish, and here's the man. We could have kids take turns. Maybe they're going to label things. So kids of different ages and abilities that may be working together in a group. One child may be at the level of using the switch, but maybe has a partner who's working on spelling some words or learning how to um, write with a pencil or you know, learning their letters. Um, so anyway, that's, that's using the power of the interactive whiteboard along with some online activities. Um, and one of the features of the smart board, and I'm sure this is true of other, um, other interactive whiteboards, is that it is also then possible for us to save this and put it into that notebook file and come back to it later and talk about it. So if I said I wanted to save it, it will now take a picture of this and it will put it into that notebook file. And then we can come back at another time and talk about what we did, what we learned, and we can talk about who answered what question and, and what they were doing. So we'll close the ink layer and we'll keep playing the game. Um, and so each time I hit my switch, I will see something else happen. Go to the next page. So again, this kind of website, I can have my students write a story about it. We can talk about it. We, if we're just at a single word uh, level, we can make, make the signs. We can talk about really all kinds of things because it's just an open book for us to work with. So that's just one game on this Help Kids Learn web pay, uh, website. Um, if we go to games, so remember there's, there's five tabs up here that's just full of activities. Um, so on the games, we have a game that's about which animal doesn't belong or which one is different. So this game is an example of the software program that this company makes called Choose It Maker. And Choose It Maker is um, again, it's an authoring tool where you can add your own pictures or words or both, 
and make activities, very simple activities where you choose from two, three, four, or six items. You can add speech um, and you can add a sound kind of reward. So this company is based in the UK, a lot of yeah. their, you'll, <laughs> but it's, it's great to listen to their accent. So again, find which one doesn't belong or find the odd one out, and then we have to find whichever one that is, and we get a little reward. Um, so again, it's giving us a chance to try out this program, Choose It Maker, before we decide if we want to make it, uh, buy it. Um, and it gives enough of the activity to really get a sense of, of what it's all about. Um, some of the ways of using it, if I weren't using the touch screen or the interactive whiteboard and I were using a mouse, notice as I cycle through, or maybe just as the teacher, if I have a group, I can cycle through and focus on each one with the highlighter. Um, it's making the sound, exactly. Yeah. So I can figure it out that way, exactly. Um, so that's just, again, one more example. Uh, let's look under creative. And again, it would work with um, the program itself works with switches. I'm not sure if the website is that sophisticated that it's set up for your switches as much as it's set up for direct interaction with the mouse. Um, but the program itself, if you were to purchase it, it does work for scanning with switches. So they also have you know, an online jigsaw puzzle with small pieces, uh, not small pieces, small number of pieces. Um, you know, Painting, coloring books, here's a giant piano, and this is again something that's really fun for the whiteboard, for the for, for working with a group. Um, I always like to f make the program fill the screen and so we can just play some music together. Um, I'm not musical so I'm <laughs> not going to keep going with that. Uh, but those of you who are could you know probably come up and do a, a little bit of a better concert than I can. Um, find out another tab that they have so they have a giant calculator or a talking clock, um, buying, going through a supermarket and buying things. Um, it's really just an endless number of, of activities that are available. And this is just one website. Um, and it's all free. It's, it's, so it's one of my favorite websites to use, not only with the smart board, but just with kids you know, at the computer. OK, so that's one, and that is help kids learn. Fade to black. The next one is another one from the UK and this one is really good for early cause and effect where kids are just learning to look at patterns or, or images. This one is called Send Switcher. Again you can run it online or you can download it to your computer um, and it's a free website. So we'll just run it online and there are, um, we can start where it's experiential, where we don't have to do anything, we can just watch. We can have an activity that just requires us to press the switch one time and something will happen. We can move up to three presses, five presses of the switch to, to complete the pattern or the picture. Um, targeting, where we have to actually locate and find the image up to scanning for kids who are learning to scan um, for a picture. So we'll just try one that's uh, easier. We'll do a three press patterns. Um, and it has the option for setting whatever options work best for your student. So for example, um, maybe we would like a yellow background with uh, black images. And so we're going to get these pictures and patterns in black on yellow. Or, you know, maybe we want the foreground to be purple and the background to be blue. Or, you know, whatever combination works well for our students, we get to set that. We also get to set if we want the activity to present each of these patterns in this order. Or maybe we don't want all of these, maybe just a couple. 
so we can even select out which ones we don't want to have happen. Um, and how long the uh, pattern will be animated once we hit the switch. Um, so to come back to the screen, it reminds us we'll need to press the M on the keyboard and then it gives us the controls to quit. And so we can just go ahead and play. So here's our blank screen. Um, and when we hit our switch, sorry, when we hit our switch, we're going to get our pattern. So remember, I picked three, uh, three presses to get, to get the pattern. And there are sound effects that go along with it. Um, and then the next one will come up. So this is great for, again, very young kids, very early cause and effect, um, you know, visual focusing, whatever, whatever works well for your particular students. I'm going to hit M to get back to the menu. I can make some adjustments if I need to, or I can simply say we're done with that and we're going to quit. So under cause and effect, they've got activities for all ages. They have, you know, the singing moose, um, they have uh, Toy Story and Bob the Builder and, uh, you know, so stuff for little kids and stuff for older kids too. And they're all switch activities or, and or they work with the touch screen. So there's, the list is really quite long as you can see it goes on forever. Um, and we're going to look at a few of those things in a second. So that's just cause and effect. Then under interactive story books, they also have a section. Um, Again, they don't have as many, but they have, you know, a nice little variety, and those are interactive talking books. So let's just uh, look at one of their, or a couple of their um, activities. So here's our fish and our man. It, it took it and it put it into my open notebook. Um, if I wanted to use that with my lesson, I'm not going to save it, though. So now this is possibly when my um, computer will crash, but we'll do our best. So here's one. This is from Priory Wood School. And we can use it either with a switch or with a touch screen. So we're going to pick touch screen for our um, interactive whiteboard. So because I picked touch screen, it's putting the big red frame around it to help me focus right where that guy is. And as soon as I touch it, then you know, and it's, it's fun, it's interesting, um, it'll go for a little while now. But you know, there is, there is some humor to it, but there's also music that kids of all ages would enjoy, whether it's the little kids or something that, you know, older kids would enjoy a little more. I, I just have to wait here. It's, I knew you'd like that one. It's, and so you can download it to your computer. I'm going to turn it off. Sorry, I have to turn it off. But I downloaded that to my computer, and then I can just run it from my computer. So that's fabulous. Um, just a little more. This one's a little f different. So everybody likes, a lot of kids like Madagascar. Again, I can use the switch or the touch screen. And again, it's a kind of a targeting activity, but cause and effect. So as soon as I hit this guy, I get some action. And what a great way for my kids to just get that immediate reinforcement. Their focus is going to be on the screen, and maybe, you know, they're just getting lots of fun stuff. So those are just a few examples. And then from their uh, collection of interactive story, um, interactive story programs, we have the So we have the old lady who swallowed the fly. There was an old lady who swallowed And what did she swallow? Was it the tree? Oops, it wasn't the tree. So it was the fly. So again, works great with a touch screen. We could use it with a mouse as well. But it, you know, it's great for the whiteboard. So now we can either choose to sing the song or we can go to the next page. And as we go through, we'll see all of the little things get stuck where she swallows them. Again, if I pick the wrong answer, it won't take it. 
as soon as I pick the correct answer, it goes into her stomach. So it might be something where we've read the story already, and now we're seeing how much did we comprehend, what do we remember, what came next. Um, maybe we're just going to do, we haven't read the story, and we're predicting what might happen. So there's lots of applications for this. We also have the words, so we can work on learning and understanding the text. Um, and then for kids who are working just with pictures or symbols, we have that as an option as well. So I think you maybe know the rest of the story. We won't uh, stick with it. Or maybe we will because now that, no, there we go. Okay, so those are from, um, all of that is just from the Priory Woods site. Now we have to get back to where we were. So that's Priory Wood School in the UK, um, and they have some, they really have some wonderful um, activities that, that are free to download. Most of their stuff is for PC, although they do have some, some of their activities work on Mac, not all of them, and it will say download for PC, Mac not available, or download for both, it'll, it'll give you that, that option. Absolutely, absolutely. The SmartBoard works with both. In fact, the computer that it's connected to right now is a Mac, but we're running it with Boot Camp, so it's running as a PC today, but, you know, we switch back and forth between the Mac and the PC. Um, and I think that's, that's true of most of them, because really all it is is it's a giant, it's a replacement for the monitor. Um, and while we're talking about that, you know, for some kids who have low vision, if they're in a big classroom, one of the options then is to hook up a monitor because you can take a video and split the video, split the video signal so that the child who maybe has a little difficulty seeing from, from a distance can see right what's going on in the monitor. And I have things in the way here, but the monitor will work at the same time. Um, so the child can sit close enough to a large monitor, follow what's happening, and then maybe when it's his or her turn, go up to the board and interact. But they'll be able to see whatever's happening on the monitor. And you're not just restricted to one monitor. It depends on what type of video splitter you get. Um, but if you think about when you go into a place where there are multiple screens and they're broadcasting something, that's really just the video signal being split multiple times. So um, that's, that makes it work well for kids who need to be up close. Fade to black. So another website that is, targets early literacy activities is Starfall. Um, and we have on Starfall, we have ABCs, then we have some beginning stories, some stories that are a little bit more advanced up to, um, you know, some stories that have quite a bit of text. But we'll just look at the ABCs. Um, again, a pretty, really very rich website for activities um, around the alphabet. And it works well with, again, kids that need a limited uh, presentation on the screen, not a lot of clutter, not a lot of things in the way. So we'll just look at, you know, we'll just pick one letter. And um, for every letter of the alphabet, G. there's some kind of an animated sequence that goes along with it. Again, the letters are nice and big. Uh, there's not a lot of background clutter, so these are a lot of features that work well with our students. Um, one of the benefits is kids learning to navigate, learning to navigate through screens. And I've found that most of my students who we've used the Starfall with they then start to look for, how do I get to the next page? And lots of programs have that. They have an arrow or a pointer or something. So they learn to use that. So just as an example, I picked the letter G. And now we'll go through a sequence of things that start with G. So I have to find the letter and touch it or click on it with my mouse. I then see the word in, in some kind of a sentence. I can repeat it if I'd like or go to the next. Again, I get to look at the picture. I could sit here with the picture on the screen for you know 10 seconds up to as long as it's there. Um, and nothing's going to happen until I touch the letter. Gorilla. 
At any point in time, if I decided this wasn't the letter I wanted or I'm, I need to be finished with it, I can simply close it out and go back to the alphabet. Um, it also has a page where the alphabet is done in the manual alphabet, which is nice for some kids um, who are, you know, signers or who may be learning signing. Um, so whatever letter we pick, it will say the letter and then show the, the finger spell, the manual alphabet for it. There are also, um, there are some games that go along with some of these activities. So, uh, for example, under the story page, I can pick a story and it's very, very simple, you know, the, the rhyming kind of sounds or I can do some interactive activity with the phonetic groups, learning words that, um, learning some words that, that use that word group. So it'll show me a picture and then I have to drag my answer. Not correct, it won't take it. So, and again, um, you know, it's a, it's a way for kids to be able to manipulate things and, you know, have a nice, clear, large print uh, voice support or speech support and be able to interact. So then there, is, there are lots of stories that go along once we've mastered those sounds or if we want to hear a story with that. Um, it, it, it won't. You can't, you can't have a touch screen at the same time because the video or the, um, they would be conflicting because the smart board or the interactive whiteboard is taking over for the mouse as well. So um, you would actually have to use the, the whiteboard for that. So just an example, very simple stories. Again, um, what I've done with some of my kids is these are great stories for simple Braille stories. So if I have a, somebody who's just learning some Braille, we can take these and print them out, but then we can come back and listen to them and interact with them um, as one way. So there's a ton of resources. Um, if we go back to the main page, if we go back to the main index, they also have, um, well, I'm not seeing it right here. They have a place where you can download um, worksheets and activities printouts that go along with all of these activities. So they have the ABC printouts and it's a whole series of um, worksheets that go along with each of the pages in this um, particular website. So these are all resources that come with it. It's a website, it's free, there's no subscription. There's, um, so here's you know, some of the examples. There's the letter A, there's a coloring page. They're all coloring pages really, a counting activity. These are all PDF files. You can just print them right out um, and take them to go. So that website is Starfall. Fade to black. The next one um, is called the Tar Heel Reader. And this website is, it's a massive collection that just keeps growing, um, where people, uh, whether it's teachers or classes of kids, have created books with PowerPoint. And then they upload them, so they're being shared. So we get books that are, you know, maybe just pictures and one word, up to books that have sentences and, and some, you know, to all kinds of topics. So we'll look at that. Again, all of these work well on the whiteboard. They also work if you don't have a whiteboard on your regular computer. So um, books by topic, let's just go to holidays. Right now, this website, it's telling me, and it's very tiny print here, but it's telling me how many books they have. They have something like 6,000 books here. So if there's a topic that you're working on, there's a pretty good chance maybe you'll find something that will work for you. So if I go to holidays, um, right now there's lots of Halloween kinds of stories. 
So let's just pick pumpkin patch. Um, and you never know what you will find. You can download these or you can use them online. And again, they're, they're books that people have created themselves. So some are good quality, some you really want to go through them and say, do I want to use this? Or maybe can I download it and tweak it a little bit, make it work for my students. Um, you can also use, uh, they all talk with a little computerized voice. It's not a great voice, but they, they do talk. So that makes a big difference for some of our students. Um, I can say I want a child's voice, a woman's voice, or a man's voice. So we'll choose the child's okay. voice. And we'll read this book. And if I had switches hooked up, I could go forward or back. So again, if I'm working with my smart board, and one of the things I want to do is maybe I want to draw focus to the sentence. We have something on the smart board called the, um, the spotlight tool where I can, um, you know, draw my focus. Sorry about that. I can draw my focus right to maybe we want to read the sentence first. And I can help my kids focus right on that before I then take that away and, and we look at the pictures that go with it. So that's one of the features. I can also then, maybe I can pick up my pencils and have, again, have my students practice writing those words. If we're working on pumpkins right now, there's the words. Or maybe we're doing an activity on nouns and verbs. Find the verb in the sentence and circle it. Or, you know, where's the pronoun? So whatever kind of activity we're doing, integrating it using those smart board tools. And how do I erase it? There's an eraser. So there's an eraser that I can use. Um, and if I were using the tools in the front, there's also an eraser. And again, the eraser, it's really because I've picked up the tool from here, whatever I can use to erase, I can erase, you know, I can erase with my hand. Um, but because I'm holding the eraser, it's, it, it will work. So this is Tar Heel Reader, and you could really spend quite a bit of time here exploring what's available as far as stories that might work with your kids. OK, so I'm not going to spend any more time on that. But there's, there really are quite a bit, quite a, quite a variety of, of stories there. Fade to black. Again, from the UK, the BBC, they have, some, they have a website called BBC Schools, um, where they have lots of fun kinds of activities. They have some particularly are their bite-size, called bite-size science or bite-size literacy, bite-size math. So maybe we'll do an activity on um, you know, our choices are living things, materials, or physical processes. So let's choose something challenging like, um, you know, changing circuits or electrical conductors or the forces in action. We'll do that one. I have an option to go full screen. So now I'm full screen. I don't have any of that other distraction in the way. And what I need to do is make the truck travel to the end of the track by changing the gradient and clicking release. So the, the nice part about these websites, again, there's not a lot of clutter. There's a really nice design. It's exactly what our kids need with um, you know, fairly good sized graphics and, and not a lot of stuff getting in the way. So um, you know, for this one, I have to, obviously, it's a science concept. So there is something about working on, you know, how far will the truck go? Whatever the curriculum area is, um, they've got something good to go along with it. Uh, so, you know, hooray for me. Um, <laughs> of course. Uh, so it, anyway, the, there are lots of these types of little activities under this BBC Schools. Um, the Bite Size Science ones are good. They have some on growing plants and uh, is it living thing or not? And um, they just work really nicely with, again, with the smart board, but, but for our students, um, they work well. Fade to black. 
then we have, um, it's called the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives. And this, this website is pretty extensive as far as what it offers for, um, it's math related, uh, but it goes from pre-K to two right up to things that are, uh, work with older kids in high school. And we can cover number and operations, algebra, geometry. So I'll just keep it simple. I'll, I'll pick number and operations. Um, and we can do anything from working with our base blocks. We can do addition. We can look at an abacus, money, all sorts of things. So we'll just, again, keep it pretty simple. We'll just work with the base blocks. And as a problem. So we won't work with the base blocks. We'll do something else. We'll just keep going. We'll try addition. Nope, not going to work. OK. Oh. We should be OK now. Nope. All right. Well, try it on your own home computer. <laughs> I'm sure it'll work. It's not, as I said at the beginning, if something's going to go down, it's going to go down today. Um, but this website really has lots of things. Um, again, you can use it with a mouse on a small computer, but to do math activities on the whiteboard and be able to manip use the manipulatives, it's really um, a nice option. So we can do, again, fractions, parts of a whole, money, number patterns, percent. Um, there's just all sorts of things. This is the um, Library of Virtual Manipulatives. Fade to black. And this is commercially available software. So um, one program is called My Board, and we looked at the notebook software, and that was maybe a little complex for some of us, um, especially if we're um, intimidated by technology. There's, there is some complexity to that. So an option for some of the younger kids or just on a simpler level is something called my board. I'm going to come out of this for a minute so I can run that. And again, it is an authoring tool. And um, it's really whatever is in your imagination, you can create an activity. So I'll just show you a few samples. We've done, you know, is it fall or summer, um, where we do that kind of, you know, categorizing. So it comes with a library of pictures that you can draw from, or you can put your own pictures in, as long as you have pictures that you want to use. Um, if they're somewhere on your computer, if they're not, you can, you can Google the pictures. It has a way of connecting right into to Google image search and getting them from there. So this is one activity we did with some of the younger kids. And they get to pick an item from the choice board, um, and then say where it goes. Does it go? Is it fall or is it summer? So, you know, basically fairly simple. It doesn't have a way of checking your answer. So it's again up to the instructor or the teacher to say, you know, do the teaching part that goes along with it. But um, just as an example, that's, that's one type of activity that you could make. Um, we'll look at a few others. I'm not going to save my changes. And so that was fall or summer. Then we did um, one called Dress for Fall. So we have the character, and the kids had to decide, you know, what should she wear. Um, the last activity we looked at, there is a toolbar at the bottom that you can hide or show. So, you know, we made the clothing fit or not fit, but if, it, if it's the wrong size or the right size, we can make it bigger or smaller or whatever we need to do, um, and then talk about whether or not we had made the right choice. So if we didn't make the right choice, then we might want to throw it away and talk again about we wouldn't wear a bathing suit in the fall, what might we wear. Um, and if some of the choices weren't here, maybe the kids started throwing out their own answers. Um, we can go to the scrapbook and just take a look at what are some of the other options. So under each letter, there are lots of choices um, of pictures that we could add. You know, hats under H. Um, each letter of the alphabet we can look at and add some pictures from that, 
from that library. Um, so whatever picture we choose to add, then it, it's on our screen and we can do something with it. And again, if it's too big, we can make it small. We can also copy it, make multiples, which would be great for accounting activity. Um, and then we could use the pencil tools to put words and um, label things. Well, let's just look at one more activity with this My Board. So we can create activities that in advance and save them and then work with them. Or one of the things that we do with one classroom is they create a storyboard. What's your story going to be about? What's the, what's the focus? And then they have to say the who, the what, the where and the when, and then they have to come here and build the story based on what they, what they came up with. Um, so we'll just look at one or two of those stories. Um, so as an example, um, last week the story was about so-and-so and they were going to go to the library and mom was going to go and they were going to read a book that was about Garfield something or other. So we have the student's picture. We didn't have mom so we pulled out the <laughs> picture of the lady. Um, we had the book but it was very specific. It had to be about Garfield. Um, so in order to do that we can just directly go right to the internet, type in what we're looking for and it will do a Google image search. So he wanted Garfield. And we would then search. And if it was the picture that we wanted, we could say add it. And now it goes right in. And uh, it doesn't look very good in here because it's got the white background. But we can trim it and get rid of that white background. And then we can use it in our story. So, and then of course kids get more interested in what can we add, what can be next, and they, it really sparks their creativity, the kinds of things that they can do with it. So that one, this program is called My Board. Um, and it's a, it's a simple kind of activity creator, a multimedia program. We just have one page, um, but that's enough because we can add enough things to our story. Fade to black. There are a few more software programs that we might use with the whiteboard or with or not. Um, Clicker 5 is a word processor that has picture support, multimedia support, so we can insert not only pictures and words, but we can add movies and sounds. We can create talking books with that. Um, we can create talking word processor files that we can share with each other. Um, IntelliTools Classroom Suite is another multimedia authoring tool. A lot of people have that program. Same kind of thing. It's, both of those are similar to the MyBoard program where we can add pictures, add sounds, add words, and manipulate them in some way to make activities. Um, some of the software programs from Inclusive TLC, just for cause and effect, uh, that work really well for kids. Well, maybe this will be the last program that we look at. Um, Big Bang Pictures and Big Bang Patterns. Um, very visually interesting for, for many of our kids. And um, I'll just use, I'll just pull it Big Bang Pictures. Uh, it's a cause and effect program um, with images that we can, you know, that are built in. We can choose which images are used. But the nice thing about this one is that we can work with it as an MP3 player. So if you have so music on your computer that you know your kids like, um, we can play that music instead of the music that comes with it. Um, we can say how long the, the action stays on the screen. I'm going to make it short. Um, and there's a whole collection of pictures, so we can unselect if we think that maybe they don't like a particular picture or they aren't interested in it, we'll take those pictures out. Um, but let's just play this one. So color combinations are great. Again, something very simple. This one I chose to use music on my computer because it was with an older student who liked, you know, not the nursery rhyme kind of sounds, but 
um, something a little more age appropriate. So lots of different kind of pictures. Um, we can set the color combinations so it's white on black or it can just be random, whatever the colors are. Um, and they have, this particular is, is also from Inclusive TLC. Um, they have Switch It Pictures. Uh, s sorry. They have um, Choose It Big Bang Pictures, Big Bang Patterns, which is similar. So it's just the two colors, you know, white on black or black on white or red on black, whatever that combination is. And then Big Bang is another similar cause and effect program that uses just primary colors. Um, so those are some options from them. Fade to black. So as we get ready to sort of close out, um, I will put this PowerPoint, the PowerPoint will be on the website. We didn't get to looking at lots of the access devices, but you'll be able to look through this and I think some of it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, whether we have options for using the regular keyboard by just putting stickers that make the letters uh, more prominent when kids need that, or um, you know, placing the keyboard on a slant. Some kids need that so that they're not using so much muscle or you know, so much head movement to find their keys. Again, anything that works with the computer is going to be something you can still use with a whiteboard. So if you have a wireless keyboard and you want to have that where kids are taking turns answering questions that way or you know, input um, using a key guard or covering some of the keys. The IntelliKeys, it's an um, alternate keyboard that has, uh, you know, it comes with some standard overlays that work with it that are large print, um, you know, whether it's just the alphabet or numbers or the QWERTY or pictures. Um, so you really have an endless uh, number of ways of using the IntelliKeys keyboard. Um, there's an example of using pictures, and there's an example of just changing the colors so maybe the picture is a little more prominent, or even um, changing it so that you use a key guard around that frames the pictures and makes those more visible. Fade to black. 